Thanks. Um, so, so um, I'm going to present my work on the presentation attack detection. So in this talk, we propose like a multitask uh, learning solution to address the presentation attack detection problem. So this is a joint work with Aaron Ross. And here's the outline of this talk. So, so, uh, so we would like to define the problem first, like what, what's the presentation attack? So presentation attack occurs that when we try to present um, some fake or deliberately altered biometric samples to a sensor in order to fool the system, so system basically cannot tell if the presented sample is live or spoof. And in this case, um, we just show some, a few examples of presentation attacks. So here we could say that we can uh, launch the presentation attacks with the print iris image and the cosmetic contact lens and even the artificial eye model. Of course, you can always come up with some novel uh, presentation attacks. And uh, so why is this problem interesting? As you know that iris recognition systems have been widely deployed in different applications. And those iris recognition systems are vulnerable like to such attacks. So we needed to come up with some presentation attack detection solutions to either deflect or detect such attacks. So luckily we have two di different types of solutions. So the first solution is sensor-based scheme. So that's basically is the hardware solutions. And the second solution is image-based scheme. So this is the software-based solutions. So in our talk, we, we are going to focus on the software-based solutions. And here's the summary of the existing work. So in the beginning of the um, presentation attack detection research, so like p researchers also tend to use like handcrafted features, like the LBP, BSAFE, HVC, and then with the advance of the deep learning solutions, so research also start to use like uh, convolution neural networks to uh, attack such problems. So the motivation for our work is that if we look at the existing PAD framework, we notice that uh, they generally follow this, pro uh, this pipeline. So you will have a capture iris image, and then you try to detect the iris regions. And once you have detected the iris, and you will apply the presentation attack um, solutions to get the P S score, and then you also want to know that if the presented sample is live or spoof. So, so since that the conventional like the P A D solutions, they require like the iris detection and the presentation attack detection to be separate steps. So we think that. Can we provide a unified end-to-end -end learning solution? That means, can we try to unify those two st steps like into a single step? And that will actually provide a more like simple and neat solutions. And this actually has not been explored before. So luckily, we have this tool called multitask learning. So multitask learning could be used to adjust like um, um, different tasks like optimizations. So the benefit is that if we use the multitask learning, it usually performs better than single task learning. And uh, of course, like another benefit is that you just need uh, like a one single forward, you can get different outputs. So that can actually save the computational time. So here we can compare the existing PAD solution and our proposed multitask PAD solutions. And you can notice the difference, it's very evident. For our proposed multitask PAD solution, we just require a one single input iris image. And you can get both detect the iris binding box and also the presentation attack scores. So here are some visualization results for our proposed uh, MTPAD solutions. So we change this MTPAD solutions um, um, for the, like, the live iris image and also the printed iris image. And you can see, for MTPAD solutions, we can get both bounding box, like accurate bounding box, and also the PS scores. So the larger the PS score, the more likely the more likely is that this sample will be like a spoof. And since that we change this MTPAD model, 
um, on just on the life artist and the print um, artist image, you could see that the PA score will degrade for the unseen like uh, presentation attacks. So um, now we come to the technology part, like uh, um, how do we actually describe this MTPD network? So luckily we have this existing um, YOLO net existing network that is called YOLO. So YOLO actually is originally used for like for the general object detection task. So we adapt this network and uh, for our, our purpose. So this architecture, it's also f it also fo follows like general um, um, convolution neural network design, and uh, you just use like a convolution and a max pooling layers. And uh, the so interesting part actually comes from the detection layer. So like in the next few, li few slides, I will focus more about the detection. So the core idea of this network lies in the loss functions. So this loss function will have three different parts. So the first part will, will be like related to the RS bounding box um, detection. So we define this RS bounding box with four different parameters. So x, y is the center of RS bounding box, and the weighters and h is the um, just weighters and h of the RS bounding box, w, h. So we will optimi optimize this bounding box loss uh, with four different parameters. And the second part of loss is that, um, so once we have this bounding box, we also want to make sure that if this bounding box contains the Irish region or not. So we need to come up with a probability to say that um, if the detected Irish bounding box contains, oh, if, if the bounding box contains the prob if the bounding box contains the Irish um, object or not. So that's the probability part. So the third part is that once we are sure that this um, Irish bounding box contains the um, Irish object, we, want, we also want to sh make sure that if this Irish object belongs to like life sample or spoof sample. So we will have two class. So we will have this loss function that, is, that will be divided into three different parts. And, uh, and here is uh, a visualization about the detection layer. So if we know that um, the detection layer like, uh, is coming after the convolution nine layer, and uh, it will have this feature dimensional size that is 13 by 13 by 35. Um, so this 35 uh, is that because we predefine, like we want to like have for each grid cell, we want to predict like five different bounding box. And for each, five, five, for each bounding box, we'll have seven different parameters to predict. Like we have four different parameters for the Irish bounding box, one parameter for the um, probability of this only bounding box containing the object, and the two pr parameters for the um, either life or the spoof sample, spoof classes. So we have seven parameters total, and if you multiply by the five bounding box, that will give you like 35 parameters. So this bounding box is that, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, the output of the final feature map is 13 by 13 by 35. So we need to um, scan like each grid cell, and for each grid cell, you will have five potential bounding box to be predicted. And uh, then we will compute uh, like the maximum IOU between those um, candidate bounding box and the ground choose bounding box. And once you record the maximum IOU, and if it's above a certain threshold, and we, we see that this bounding box actually contains the RS uh, region. So, and here's the uh, mathematic formulation for this bounding box prediction. So I will skip this one. So now we, we want to verify uh, how the, the effectiveness of our proposed approach. So since that we have got like a really limited training data set, so we also have to fine tune the, uh, our model on the existing image net model. And uh, so um, as I mentioned that um, for our proposed MTPAD network, it can perform both like RS detection and uh, also RS presentation att attack detection. So in this case, um, we train a standalone RS detection model and uh, and we test it on the live detection to sound 15 Warsaw database. And you can see 
it actually provides very good R responding box regions. And we also tested on the, do the cross data set test on the Cassie Iris fake. And you note know, this Cassie Iris fake actually, those Iris images are captured in um, wide conditions. You can see it got a very um, bad illumination conditions. And you got occlusions with gla glasses and also occlusion with iris. So, but for our method, actually, it can still provide a very reliable R spanning box. So, and the next, we want to show the results on the RS PAD um, detection. So, for this experiment, we we perform like both inch sensor and cross sensor PAD e evaluations. So, for the inch sensor um, PAD evaluation, so we focus on the cosmetic contacts lens detection, and uh, we also focus on the synthetic uh, um, artist presentation attack detections. And for the cross sensor, we will focus on the print uh, artist attack. So we also follow like the, um, the benchmark like uh, protocols. So we use three different uh, evaluation matrix. And for our proposed MT, MTPAD solutions, actually, we get a very competitive performance compared to the um, existing approach, like the spoof net and the multiple CNN approach. So here are some visualization results. And uh, so this is on the cosmetic contact lens attack. So we can get both our responding box region and also the presentation attack score. And this is a sensitive attack. So uh, we also want to see, you know, how our proposed multitask PAD solution could be generalized to different data set and the different uh, sensor. So we perform this cross data set and uh, cross sensor RS PAD um, evaluation. And so uh, we train our model on the live detect RS 215 Wasa. And then we test it on Burke RS fake and also live detect RS 2017 Clarkson. And you, if you note, look at the data set characteristics, you will see actually they have very different image conditions. And especially for the Clarkson data set, they have different contrast and they actually they also have different uh, texture details with respect to the, to the iris images. So this actually cross data set uh, analysis actually is a very challenging problem. And uh, so for our proposed multitask PAD solutions, we get a quite very good performance on the bulk iris fake because the bulk iris fake actually, the image condition is kind of close to the uh, Warsaw database. But we got a slightly worse performance on the classical data set. So, and here are some visualization results. The first row actually are the, the successful results. But you can still see the PS score is still kind of low. And the bottom room actually is the failure results. Because for these live samples, or this is spoof samples, it's still classified as live samples. And this is the live samples, but it's classified as spoof samples. So there are st um, still um, room for, it, for the improvements. So the contrib contributions to our work is that um, we propose this multitask PD uh, solutions, which can simultaneously perform like RS detection and the RS presentation attack detection. Because we think that once we get this RS bounding box, you can also apply like the um, existing PD solutions because the existing PD solution, they require the detect the RS bounding box. And uh, of course the RS, you know, detect RS bounding box could also be used for the other task like uh, Iris regulation or gender prediction from the Iris region. And uh, so w our method actually also shows very competitive performance on the benchmark data sets in both like inch sensor and cross sensor set settings. So our project is funded by the following sponsor and, uh, and that actually concludes my talk. So if you have any questions. All right, so let's thank the speaker.
Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, okay. Did you notice any trends uh, in, I guess, the, the the failures due to like dilation of the pupil? Does that make the make it seem more like a, uh, I guess, a presentation attack? Um. Yeah. Uh, the the dilation. So the dilation areas actually could be like a one. You know, one potential reasons for the um, one potential reason that could affect the, the presentation attack uh, um, performance, but um, mm, we haven't actually because we do not have like uh, data sets that uh, are collected for this you know specific effect. Like uh, I know there are probably some data sets you know that are specifically collected to start uh, the RS dilation problems. And in this case, you know, if we have those data sets available, and we can try to evaluate um, if this iris dilation could be like a one, one type of contribution effect um, to, dis to distinguish between like the live and the spoof samples. Because for, the, for this presentation attack detection, a lot of factors could contribute to the problem like uh, you know, for if if your samples are captured in a, in a different environment, like your live samples captured in different environment, sometimes you cause be considered as a, a spoof samples, and uh, you know there are different uh, uh, impacting factors, and uh, we have not studied like this dilation like effect uh, uh, for the moment. Yes. Okay, any other questions?